Happy you are back. We are joined as always by Greg Angert, beer director for the neighborhood restaurant group of Food and Wine Sommelier of the Year. The group includes Columbia Firehouse in Old Town and not too far away in Del Rey. You've got Planet Wine uh, and um, Evening Star Cafe right next door. Greg, it is always good to see you. Good to see you too. What is on tap this week? This week we have a fittingly strange uh, label um, for what we'd expect, um, at least from our friend Yepa at Evil <laughs> Twin. Um, so this is a collaboration beer. Um, it's a collaboration between Yepa, uh, B. Eric So, he is uh, famously Evil Twin, uh, originally from Copenhagen. He resides in New York, and many of his beers are actually brewed at uh, Westbrook Brewing Company in South Carolina, including this one. Um, of course, his twin brother is famously Mikkel, B. Eric So from Mikeller. Um, so he's brewing uh, this beer with uh, Beavertown, which is a relatively uh, new, at least to the U.S., British brewery, um, also um, headed up by someone famous, uh, Logan Plant, who is Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin fame's son. So he's a craft beer guy, which is really cool. Q Houses of the Holy. That's right, right now. yeah. And uh, he also just happens to make delicious beers in London. So together they've come to make a beer that, as we were just discussing, is a seeming misnomer, though it's not, and I'll get to that, an imperial mild ale of, I believe it's about 12%, uh, I'm sorry, 9.5% alcohol. So an imperial mild of 9.5%. What we find is it's really more of like a kind of blonde barley wine, uh, but delicious as well. Well, if that's mild I'd, at 9.5, I uh, would right, hate right. to see what his imperial strong ale is. Mm. Really uh, nice grain. Yeah, tons of malt nose. character. So you get that toffee, oh. toasted bread, little caramelization in there. Oh, that's um, good. Some golden raisin as well. On the palate, that's it's good. got some, some richness from the malt. It finishes semi-dry and a little bit of alcohol, um, as a barley wine should have in the finish. This would age really well, of course. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, you get that uh, more of the, the wine the barley wine taste in the end, and it's right. a nice, slow ride. That's, that is Sipper, that's outstanding. For sure. And it's actually called XXX. So, quick history lesson on this. Imperial Mild Ale, of course, we think of mild, we think of something that is, um, you know, bereft of flavor, or something that's, or, or something that's gonna be uh, easier on, your, on you, or something easier on the palate. In fact, in, Britain, in British brewing parlance, mild, um, in the old days, going back to the 18th and 19th century, just referred to beer that was sold um, beer or ale that was sold fresh versus that which was kept um, or, you know, or aged. Um, and so back in those days, this is before styles and really even beer namings, you'd have uh, ale, which is, uh, was once unhopped and spiced. Um, you know, um, and then you'd have beer, which was the newer, newfangled, hopped ale. And these could be made in all sorts of colors, so pale, brown, amber. They could be made in all sorts of strengths. Um, and, and then they could either be kept, often called stale, which is another word we typically don't use for things we like anymore, um, or they could be sold mild, which is um, fresh. Uh, somewhere along the way through lots of, uh, you know, circuity of history and things like that, mild com came to mean, um, in a beer term, something slightly darker, lower in alcohol. Um, but in fact, in the old days, you could have a beer that was mild that could be nine and a half percent alcohol. And that brings us back to the X's. In the 19th century, they started to mark beers based on their strengths. And so a, you could have the exact same beer three ways, X, double X, triple X. All of them could be sold fresh and therefore all of them could be mild. Greg, uh, no one's buying Brennan's stale ale. I, yeah. I, 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 I it does can't not figure working. it out. That's not working. Well, yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, Wow, that's dynamite. It's cool, uh, yeah. So, but for our intents and purposes today, probably more like a barley wine. Yeah, I'd say. but a, a good one at that. Yeah, uh, very good. What would you pair this with? So, you know, uh, again, uh, this goes with, uh, you can put this with your desserts and your blue cheeses and any m manner of, like, charcuterie. Um, things that are rich, you know, game birds and, and steaks, obviously, would work with this. But, it, you know, thinking about some other ways that this worked, we've had a lot of success pairing this with some of our more savory brunch items downstairs at Birch and Barley, um, because that kind of, think of, you ever think about how like salted caramels, how delicious that is, that interaction of caramel sweetness and salt? Find the same thing with saltier foods, so just like bacon and eggs. 
awesome balance against, balancing against the sweetness here. Bagels with lox and everything bagel with cream cheese, amazing as well. Well, we've tried, we've invited Peter Dinklage of Game of Thrones uh, fame to join us. He, we haven't heard from him, but maybe Logan and Robert Plant would like to swing by. Maybe they would. That'd be cool. That All would right, be cool. I'll, I'll work on that. Awesome. Don't uh, hold your breath. <laughs> Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.